Hello everyone, Texas Man here. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. If you guys would, please give this video a thumbs up. If you guys do enjoy it, subscribe, of course, if you guys have not already. Also, do me the biggest favor of all. Make sure you guys hit the bell notification button so you guys don't miss out on future videos or streams here on the channel. As, as, as always, if you guys have any movies, TV shows, or games you guys would like me to cover here on the channel, please let me know in the comments down below. And as always, we're going to be talking positives and unfortunately mostly negatives about the Last Airbender and Night Shyamalan's 2010 epic disaster. Just to prove it to you, yeah, I do have a Blu-ray copy of this, and um, it's everything in me not to snap the disc in half at the moment. If you guys want to actually watch Avatar: The Last Airbender, notice they couldn't put Avatar: The Last Airbender for the title because, yeah, just just and and look at these, look at these characters. Does this resemble this? Does it resemble it? No. This does not resemble this at all. Okay? <laughs> Huge difference. If you want to watch Avatar, yeah, and I'm calling it what it is, Avatar, The Last Airbender, this is the stuff of legend. Three seasons. $30, Amazon, great content, great story, characters, world building, heart love, romance, dark and edgy moments, epic battle scenes. This is the stuff of legend. This is good TV, unlike what we get nowadays. I don't know what this is, but this is not Avatar The Last Airbender. I don't know what M. Night Shyamalan was smoking in 2010 when this movie came out. But it is not. This is not Avatar The Last Airbender. And I didn't see it when it came out in theaters. Uh, it's just a movie I didn't care about seeing. Um, and I got a copy of this for two bucks to review from a local store. So I decided to do a review of it. And this is an hour and 40 minutes I'll never get back of my life. This is a disaster. This movie is based on the highly beloved Avatar The Last Airbender show. Basically what it tries to do, this film, it tries to cram all of season one, Book of Water, all of the story, the world, the characters, and the plots in an hour and 40 minutes. Here's the thing. The first season is like 22 episodes. So in each episode about 20 to 30 minutes. So we'll just round that to about <clears throat> so 20 episodes. So, 3, 6, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. So that's on average 7 hours of content, and they tried to cram it in under 2. Do you see a problem there? Um, it lacks a lot of elements. It lacks plot, it lacks the characters, it lacks the world building, it lacks respecting the source material. The movie just rushes through several key moments. And there's characters that aren't even in the film that are in the show. Like, where's the cabbage guy? Where's Boomy, uh, an Earth King? He's not even mentioned. The movie just squandered the source material. The acting is horrible. The characters don't even behave nor look like their show counterparts. Nothing hooks you or keeps you invested or interested. It is a snooze fest. I watched this with my mom, and she's like, this is so boring and generic. And I'm like, yeah, mom. Like, if you watch this and you think, hey, watch the live-action version and then watch the show, don't ever get people to think this is what the show is. Because it's not. This is an insult. The humor is laughable because it's not funny. There is this... Forced romance between the Water Princess and Soka. It is just, it just magically happens. Like, they literally have to narrate to you that they like each other. And then they kiss. And then, you know, the, the princess dies. And it's like, oh, you're supposed to feel emotion because they're romantically in love. People, they've known each other for three minutes. And one of them dies and I'm supposed to cry a river? I'm supposed to cry a waterfall? I just... Huh? I don't care that they're in love. Their romance has magically just happened in three minutes because the movie tells us that they're in love instead of it being shown on screen 
for 20 to 40 minutes. There is no proper direction. There's no proper pacing. The visuals are a catastrophe. It has slow motion sequences that are worse than a Zack Snyder movie. The film just overall, it changed things, it deleted things, and it added things in opposite of what the show was meant to be. Opposite of what season one was. It, it is trying to juggle seven hours of content into an hour and 40 minute film. And even if this movie was three hours long, I there are some things that you just need to leave well enough alone. Now, I haven't seen Avatar The Last Airbender, the Netflix version. I honestly don't think I will because the showrunners have come out and literally said before season one aired that um, the show is, you know, sexist. Uh, Soka is sexist. It's got outdated propaganda. And I'm just like, okay, so, yeah, and, and uh, Aang's not going to go on his you know, childish adventures and try to be a kid. He's just all Avatar business. Gotta save the world. Gotta fall in love with uh, whoever I can. I I just... I have no interest and desire to watch the Avatar The Last Airbender show on Netflix. Now, if you guys want me to, you guys can tell me in the comments. I might try to suffer through it just so I can make a video. But I have no interest and desire. Because no matter what happens to the Avatar The Last Airbender franchise. This movie alone solidified that the show is a masterpiece. It's epic. Leave well enough alone. Quit trying to live action everything to death. We've gotten live action. Cinderella, Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Little Mermaid. How many versions of Peter Pan do we need? Uh, A.K.A. Hook. <laughs> um... Like, just leave well on alone. That was the whole purpose and the grand epicness of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was that animated movies and live action movies could be separate, but they could to- be toe to toe with each other. They could coincide in the film industry and in the show industry and be epic in their own way of presenting stories and characters and worlds. And sometimes, Animation allows for better expression than an actor or actress presenting those things. It's a lot easier at times for computer-generated images or um, other CGI-like effects to be used. It, It allows for more artistic visual spectacle and for you to be able to enjoy it more Sometimes more than live action. There are some there are limitations to live action visual effects stuff. But both of them have their own place. But quit trying to make one of them be good in the other reality. It doesn't work. This and this are not on the same playing field, okay? This one is clearly this one's higher up. This one's still sorry, this one's This one's going bye-bye. This one does not exist. Okay? This is gold. This is gold. Okay? This is three seasons of epicness. And this is not. If you want something to watch to put you to sleep while you're drinking your alcohol or you're folding laundry, as I like to say on this show, (laughs) in this channel, here you go. Here's an hour and 40 minutes worth of background noise. If you want to watch a movie where your grandma is constantly talking and boring you to death because she's asking you what happens and you just don't care because the movie doesn't seem to either, then you can watch this movie. (laughs) Okay? So, I'm giving The Last Airbender from 2010 a 1 out of 10. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. and look forward to more awesome videos coming out soon. Bye! That was long.